Hi, and welcome to our program. Today we have Rebecca Caputo here uh, in the studio with us. She's going to tell us about being a puppet master, her theater Animisme, and her latest show, Belonging. Thank you for coming, Rebecca. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yes, our pleasure. So last things first, let's start with your latest show, mm -hmm. Belonging. Mm -hmm. So what is it about? Um, well, at the core, it's about immigration and integration, but um, it has many levels to it. And it's also about my experience moving to a new country and how I found my way here and also other people's stories and how they have made a life in a new country and kind of what is uh, like common between all of us um, and yeah how how people experience that and then the idea of the show is for other people to have a better understanding of how it feels to move to a new country and integrate into a new country mm -hmm. and uh, you also included some puppet making workshops in the project why did you decide to do that yeah so um there was a kind of like a four-part process to making this show um and the show was the very end of this quite long process mm -hmm. um, I knew I wanted to make a show about my own experiences of moving to a new country I I'd found it really difficult I kind of had a bit of a mental breakdown when I moved here and I needed to process that in some way but I also knew making a show just about my own experiences is kind of um, well, just not rich enough so I wanted to meet lots of other people who had been through the same process um, But also I didn't want to just go and interview lots of people because that's not how I work and that's not how I connect with people. I wanted them to also take something from the process and have a creative process themselves and have a like physical way of connecting with the place they are new li now living in. Um, so we decided to make puppet making workshops where individuals could come and make a puppet with me and that puppet would be a self-portrait we then made an exhibition of all of those puppets uh, there were 28 in total i have one here this is fong she is from vietnam um, and this is the puppet fong made so we had 28 of these and they were made by people from all over the world and they stood together in docket um, with short extracts from their stories underneath mm -hmm. them so as the public walked through the exhibition they could read all these snapshots of stories and um, get a feeling for how it feels to be an immigrant mm -hmm. um, and then I took all these stories and I kind of um, blended them and reworked them to create a whole new story about a fantasy a, fa a fantasy story so it was no one particular story mm -hmm. um yeah so things like I heard a story of one woman who what was common between everybody no matter where they were from is in the period of first moving to a new country you get this real like low period and we all called it like the desperate phase <laughs> where you don't know anyone and it's almost like grieving for your home and your friends and your family um and she said she was in this stage and she uh was sat or walking i'm not sure where she was but she saw a bird and this bird flew down and was collecting twigs for a nest and building a nest. And um, this bird dropped a twig and flew off and she went and picked up the twig and held onto it and kept hold of it. And it kind of became a symbol to her of like, keep going, you can get through this. Yeah. Um, so in the show now, after an episode where the main character's work is failing, she hasn't got any friends, she's feeling very low, she meets a bird and that bird kind of like lifts her spirits again and mm -hmm. pushes her to keep going just like this woman yeah. yeah but you didn't use these puppets in the show you use mm -hmm. another ones yeah and you have some completely here? different puppets yeah so as a, an artist and a puppet theater artist i've been fascinated by paper for years and years and years i did a masters in 2015 and kind of made my study all around animating paper mm -hmm. so this show kind of came from that and as i was making the show and knew i wanted to work with paper the two things kind of naturally connected a lot like mm -hmm. um symbolically metaphorically like um 
when we move to a new country, we need papers to stay. So there was kind of like、mm. this very like base. Connection, but then also when you work with paper, it's so fragile and temporary that it also had like developed this metaphoric meaning for me of, of like how I feel being、mm. in a new country and how all these people I met felt. So the puppets from Belonging, our main character is actually just a piece of paper. So she、um, she can move and is quite fluid. She can also fly, which is nice. <laughs> And get caught by the wind. She can swing a bit.、Um, so she's my main character, and she appears like this big, but also very big.、Um, so I actually have multiple versions of her in the show, and she has this very fluid way of moving. But then the characters from the world I've created—it's not reality. It's a weird paper world. I mean, you can see people don't look like people there. Um, they all have a much more like rigid way of moving.、Um, he's the border guard, so he's particularly tough. tough. Yeah. yeah. yeah.、Um, and you will see from the clips of the performance that I speak in this gobbledygook vulapuk.、Um, and、um, the reason I do that is it kind of like completely throws my audience. So right from the start. No one really knows what's going on, or they're trying to make sense of this world where everything's kind of abstracted and is recognisable but isn't. And this is kind of how I think you feel when you enter a new country, a new culture. It's kind of like complete alienation. So that's what I try to do with the show. And then、um, I also work with pop up a lot. My scenography opens up, and pop-up worlds appear.、Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's such meaning behind this, but for me, when I was like developing the show, I was doing a lot of research. I was teaching myself pop-up art because it interested me, and it kind of all fitted together. It's kind of、mm-hmm. also this like. The, the the city and the place she moves to kind of reveals itself to her and grows and also becomes more colourful as she's there. The longer she's there,、mm-hmm. yeah. And about like your new project now, because I see that there's yeah. So this guy here,、uh, this is a nurse,、um, and she actually has a reversible face. I'm not sure if I can reverse it. So she's also very angry. And also very happy.、Um, this is kind of a new old project because I made her in 2015, I think, for an old performance in the UK. I I worked with a company called Odd Doll. I had my own company in the UK before I moved here,、mm-hmm. um, and we made a performance about、uh, dementia and the care system. And for that performance, I made I think there were 50 heads in total. But there were fifty five zero. But there were I cast fifty heads. But then there were twenty five full nurse puppets, and then lots of other bits of nurse puppets. And since I've been in Denmark, I've always wanted to kind of use them in something.、Um, and then with the pandemic and the nurses' strike, everything's kind of fit into place、mm-hmm. to reinvent these. So last、mm-hmm. year, I exhibited for them. Them the first time in、um, Kunstpakhuset in Ekast,、mm-hmm. um, and there are twenty five of these, and they are all、um, they sit on a table,、uh, and they are all kind of in suspended animation, doing different things, and they are、mm-hmm. rebuilding themselves, painting themselves.、Uh, it's an installation, so they don't move. So it's also playing with this idea of the uncanny puppets and、mm-hmm. whether we can see life within puppets when they are still.、Um, and I've worked with a musician and composer to create this found sound track music that、um, it has all kind of like machinery and、uh, like a sewing machine and a cup of tea being made and all of these things that give this idea of like a. Production line and、mm-hmm. this like never-ending cycle, and then we have these twenty-five nurses rebuilding themselves. So this is a installation rather than a performance,、um, and it will it will exhibit again in March at. And 
from 13th? Correct? That's correct. Yeah. 10th to the 13th of March at Tierra Reflection, mm -hmm. which is in the city centre in Aarhus. And it's from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. each of those days. And it's free. So you can just come and see the installation for real and all 25 of them. Yeah. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. And this is like also a bit hard um, topic, let's mm, say, mm. Uh, also with the belonging topic. Yeah. And how do you do you make it accessible to everybody because you yeah. perform for children and yeah. adults? So the nurses is just for adults because it's okay. a bit creepy. I think there's some <laughs> children who would enjoy it, but I leave that up to the parents <laughs> to decide. So the nurses is for just an adult audience, but yet yeah, belonging is for ages eight and plus. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I mean, I deal with the difficult issues, but I do try and keep the whole thing quite light. It's really quite funny. I play with these like everyday situations that we all kind of know and recognize, like not understanding language, um, getting lost in places. So they're very like universal things. And I, I have also kept the story really simple. I've been like, when I was making the show and considering how to write the performance, I was always a bit unsure of whether it should be more dramatic, more romantic. Um, but actually, it's the story I tell is really simple. It's just of someone who comes and starts a business selling food. So it's like, yeah. it's a really, it's an everyday story. But as I've been performing it and touring it, I've performed to like lots of immigrants and I've performed to second generation immigrants, children of immigrants. And I also took it to an, a refugee center in um, Yelling where I performed to 70 refugees. Mm -hmm. And they all really, really connect with it because it is a simple story. And something the show does that I never realized it would do is um, for these people, it kind of elevates the importance of their story and these mm -hmm. like ordinary everyday stories because yeah. suddenly it's on stage and it's mm -hmm. a bit fantastical. Um, yeah, so I think it's doing something really important for people to be able to say, ah, oh, actually, you know, that must have been really hard for my mum and dad to come over here and do that. and respect to them yeah yeah that's yeah. So nice. yeah and you made both these projects to your theater animisme right yeah yeah that you founded yeah so i founded that in 2018-19 um so i've always made my own theater i i did an acting degree a long time ago but i it was more of, it was like quite an alternative theater school and it was much more about writing and mm -hmm. creating new theater than it was about traditional actor training. We did a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but from that, I have always made my own work. So this is actually my third company. Oh, okay. I had a company straight out of acting school and we were very young and we had a lot of success, but it was very immature. Mm -hmm. So we did that. I then started uh, we used a bit of puppetry in that company and then I became much much more fascinated in the art form I'm really like what excites me about it is it's this this clash of or this collaboration of visual art and theater mm -hmm. so you can create living sculpture with puppetry and you can create anything you want to create there are no limits so this is really what excites me so as I left that first company I went back and I trained I learned how to make puppets I went on lots of courses where I learned how to animate properly and like the the core fundaments of the art form um and then I set up a company called old doll puppetry and that's when I made these nurse puppets and I worked with a fantastic artist called Kathleen Yore she's also a lifelong friend of mine um and we worked together and we made five shows together and we were making for children, for adult audiences and really working with combining clown and live music and puppetry. Okay. Then I came to Denmark for a year, which became two years, which then I was like moving in between the UK and Denmark trying to work in both countries and that didn't really work. Yeah. So I had to make a choice. Um, so I decided to choose to live here and start a family with my partner but also I'd been working a lot with Theatre Reflection who mm -hmm. where the nurses will be exhibited um, and lots of opportunities were coming up in Denmark so it felt right to move myself here. It was also an opportunity to set up a company 
it was just me. Like Odd Doll was always a collaboration with another mm-hmm. artist. So with Animisme, I did a lot of soul searching and thinking about who I, who am I as an artist? What is important to me? Um, and um, when before when I worked in the UK, I'd done a lot of we call it like community work but it's working with groups of people and using your art form to connect with them Mm -hmm. so I'd been working with refugees with old people I'd worked in prisons I'd worked with a lot of like Mm -hmm. troubled youth um always using puppetry and theater to connect with them so I wanted to incorporate that into animismo but I also wanted to make this you know, high-class professional puppet theatre as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where belonging came from. So I could make these workshops and connect with the community I was making the work for, but then also creating a performance. Yeah. Yeah, and then to make belonging, I had a lot of help from a lot of other people. Um, It's not, well, it's just me on stage. There was a team of probably getting on for 20 people who helped make it happen. I had... A director, Bjarne Sandball from Theatre Reflexion, and the team there helped a lot. I had a designer, Penilla Kofoed, who helped me design and build and create this world so it would work for me as a puppeteer, but it would also look beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had volunteers helping me build the puppets. There was a lot of people involved, mm-hmm. so it was a big team. And then there's an administrator, a yeah. PR mm-hmm. woman. So, yeah, a huge team making is it, it happen. Is it this big or like, uh, is this size normal? For me and my projects, yeah, in the UK I'd work with teams about that size. Okay. But it was a big project for me, for my first project here in Denmark. I was mm-hmm. quite ambitious, but... It paid off because yeah. it's. I've made a good show and it's going well. Yeah. What yeah. has been the the feedback? Um, like really excellent feedback. I I had this really excellent feedback from school group. They all drew pictures uh, because they were children. Um, age eight, we were we were testing the you know how how young can children mm-hmm. connect with this performance, and we yeah. we actually tested age six and age eight, and six were too young, so it's. It was a good test to do. Yeah. But the eight-year-olds all drew pictures, and they drew pictures of what they remembered most from the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was kind of the best feedback because it was like, you know, what what was still in their minds two days yeah. later when they were drawing the pictures. And they all loved this character I have. He's, he's one of these cone characters, but he's on wheels, and he's, like, on a moped, and he's mm-hmm. always going around, like... <laughs> liked him best <laughs> so I guess it's the humor then maybe they like yeah. best in it um mm-hmm. uh, yeah and another piece of feedback I often have is um at the beginning there are different characters who are allowed past the guard and one of them is a boat and they're not allowed Papsky. Hey. Hey. Um, and they actually get kicked out and thrown off the stage and then they remain in this kind of wilderness Mm -hmm. um, for the rest of the performance and people often comment on that and ask why Um, and it's because when I was working with the refugees in the refugee centre I worked with probably about 15 altogether and I only know for a fact what happened to a few of them I know some of them with families got Mm -hmm. leave to remain which is excellent but like one of them whilst I was working with him got his rejection letter Mm -hmm. and that was really hard and he has had to leave Denmark and I don't know where he is now and there were a few people like that where I don't know what's happened to them 
yeah. and possibly the worst. So that's why that boat remains in the show and remains on yeah. the stage the whole yeah, time. That's a good meaning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you usually work uh, in a show, like in a project at a time, or? Yeah, I I kind of, if I have too many projects at one time, it's too much. So I I tend to just do one project at the time. This was these are my two animismo projects at the moment, and I'm now in kind of like a period of development of what my next project will be. I'm mm -hmm. I'm exploring materials again. I don't want to work with paper anymore. But I don't know what it is I want to work with next. So I'm kind of in my workshop playing with a lot of materials and just building puppets and thinking at the moment. And I'm also thinking around the themes I want to work with. And I think there's something in becoming a mother, but I don't know what that is yet. So I'm like going through a personal process of thinking what, mm -hmm. what do I want to make a piece of art about next and the kind of physical process of like, well, what materials mm -hmm. connect with with the topic with the topic yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And and what about the logistics? Like, how how do you put a show together? Do you have the idea before, like the um, the puppets? Do you have the topic? Do you have the story? Yeah, yeah. What comes first? Ah, it's like a bit chicken and the egg, you know, because um, everything kind of evolves together. But mm -hmm. before before you make a project, you need some money. Yeah. And to get some money, you need an idea, mm -hmm. and you need a team, and you need to have already mapped out how the project will work. And it always kind of evolves a bit as you go along, but you you have a very good base understanding of what will happen at the mm -hmm. start. Um, yeah, so I'm now thinking of venturing into new projects, maybe one with this little bear here. <laughs> um, and uh, so first I think about artistically what, what will the concept be and then I think about who who I need to help me realize that so I start to put a team of people together and it's not just oh I need someone to make the sound it's also I need I need some test audiences so I need some children mm -hmm. so will I work with a burner here or will I work with a library mm -hmm. um so I need partners to work with on the project um so that that kind of all starts there and then when I'm when I was developing belonging uh, I'm just trying to think how I do it now so I would like I do a workshop like say a week long where I work with another puppeteer and I, we make rough puppets and we throw ideas together and we try things out and, you know will this work will that work and then I make puppets and make scenography for a bit and then I come back and do another workshop and then I make a bit more so it's kind of like things are growing together mm -hmm. at the same time and the scenography is growing at the same time and throughout this we're getting the the sound designer and the lighting okay. designer in to see and the mm -hmm. director to see what we're doing and then for belonging I had a four week process but that was far too short for a project of, I, like I needed longer so, but you always need longer <laughs> so uh, yeah then we took four weeks where we like worked very solidly to pull everything together and make the performance but I'm, I'm still working on it now like yeah, there's always something yeah I've now toured it and there are like a few scenes where I'm like, mm, there's just something missing in that, or I don't feel quite comfortable playing that. Like I know there's something more that I'm not quite doing in that scene. Yeah. So I think I will be forever working on it and I'll go yeah. back into rehearsal with my director before I tour again, mm -hmm. yeah. And is there some things that you are always in charge of? In the, in the project? Yeah. Um, I like to think I'm quite flexible, but maybe I'm also a bit of a control freak. You know, when it's your idea and yeah, you you want it to be a certain way, but you also want to give your collaborators room to mm -hmm. do their thing yeah. and feel like connected to the project as well. Um, with belonging, I definitely tried to do too much. I was project managing the whole thing. I was writing it. I was building the puppets. I was trying to do the scenography. It was like too much so I know when I go into my next major project like that I will be much more I yeah I think I will want to connect my team to the project much earlier in the process and give over more to other people much earlier in the process so mm -hmm. it's less all up here yeah. and yeah okay. now more about puppetry like yeah. do you consider it a lost art 
Um, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think like, um, I think in some ways it's like an understated art because people have a lot of preconceptions about what puppetry is. Mm -hmm. Like it's for children or it's, I don't know, we have Punch and Judy in the UK, which it, it's, yeah, people have, have these ideas that it's a certain thing, but actually it can be absolutely anything and it can be for absolutely anyone. So it's a really diverse art form. And in that sense, I don't think it is lost because as soon as you start to like meet other puppeteers or start to investigate what's out there, there's so many people doing so many like, bizarre and weird and wonderful things you know there's like yeah. six there's six foot puppets walking through Europe and then there's also tiny little worlds in suitcases that are just for one audience you know it's it's so vast and it's so different um I don't think it's lost at all and I think like also with like the growing growing social media and stuff mm -hmm. because people can research art forms so much more easily it's becoming more and more popular because people are seeing it more yeah. so I think that it's kind of getting a bit of a revolution as well and That's it's a really growing art form yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and there's some like really funky companies out there um, there's obviously Reflection in Aarhus who are making really really beautiful work but then there's Merlin puppets from Berlin and they're making like really darkly comic kind of sinister work they've got one that's sort of, one show that's all just deaths and it's just puppet deaths but it's <laughs> hilarious and then um, there's also Opposable Thumb in the UK who are really combining clown and puppetry mm -hmm. and a guy called Dick Downey from that company who's mm -hmm. making really like bizarre wacky work so there's it's Still like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is it for you? Like, what is it like to be a puppeteer? Um, what does it mean to you? It's, um, it's, it's like magic for me. Um, when I'm working, I get completely lost in it. And it's, it's like my, my meditation and my art. So I can spend a day in the rehearsal space or in my workshop and only be thinking about what I'm doing. And in these challenging times of living in a global <laughs> pandemic, that is really useful to have something like that that you can lose mm -hmm. yourself in. Um, but it's also, you know, when I perform to people and they take something from my performance, I'm giving them something and, yeah. mm -hmm. and that feels wonderful. You know, it's not a selfless act. It makes yeah. me feel good. So, yeah. yeah. yeah Great, yeah. Rebecca. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and for sharing and showing Thank everything. You. Should we just have a little bit of him? Yeah, yeah, we can. Nice ways to end. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? He's just Little Bear. He doesn't really have a name at the moment. Um, yeah. But he's Good. kind of my uh, training puppet at the moment. I just work with him to train a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Great. Oh, thank you so bye. much. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for staying with us. Until next time.